Mark, I, I'm looking over my lecture notes here from today's lecture. And by the way, two thumbs up for today's lecture <laughs> on phylogeny, one of my favorite right. topics. Uh, I understood about monophyletic phylogeny. That's where there's right. a last common ancestor and all the descendants. Perfect. But then I must admit, for about five minutes there, I sort of zoned out, and I was thinking about the Notre Dame versus Alabama game tonight. God, me too. And I missed... I think I missed the important point differences between polyphyletic and paraphyletic. How do you distinguish one versus the other? How do you know if you're looking at one of those phylogenies? That's a great question, and sometimes it's pretty hard to tell the difference. Um, maybe just working one more example might help. Uh, the thing to do is pick an example where you have both poly and paraphyletic at once. So let's just pick a group, like our friends the birds. And uh, like any group, there are thousands of species of birds, and they could be made into a great big phylogeny. And there are things that define all birds in the world. They're in the class babies. And you probably know that all birds have feathers. So no other organism has this very specialized structure called feathers. So, birds, monophyletic group. Let's say we were looking at different groups within the birds, and they're all different kinds of birds. There's pelicans and parrots and puffins and many other birds. Um, and you might think birds fly. After all, that's what the feathers are for. And sure enough, it does seem like flight is ancestral in birds, but a number of different bird groups have lost the ability to fly. So this represents only a small amount, but say this group is the penguins. That's a pretty large group of species. They lost flight here. Lost flight. But you know what? Other things did too, like the elusive dodo. A dodo is a huge, flightless pigeon. It's actually a kind of pigeon. So if this represents the pigeons, here's this one that lost flight. So I could mistakenly define a group by no flight. And if I did, penguins and dodos would be together in a group. So clearly this is not a monophyletic group. But what is it? You have to follow what happens with the LCA, the last common ancestor. I know this is polyphyletic because it doesn't include the LCA. Because as I've drawn it, the last common ancestor of dodo and penguin is way down here. So the group putting them together doesn't include the last common ancestor, poly. What's paraphyletic? Doesn't include all descendants. So actually, there's a paraphyletic group here, too. All the rest of the birds that have true flight, they are paraphyletic. It includes the last common ancestor of this second group. So the last common ancestor is in, so it's not polyphyletic, but you lose some of the descendants. So all flying birds are paraphyletic, all flightless birds are polyphyletic. Bottom line, does it include the LCA or not, and does it include all descendants or not? And so paraphyletic does not include the last common ancestor. Could it be that simple that a polyphyletic includes the last common ancestor and a paraphyletic? Other way. Good teaching moment. <laughs> a polyphyletic doesn't include the last common ancestor Correct. Correct. and a paraphyletic does. does include the last common ancestor. But not all the descendants. Oh, got it, got it. 